Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight in our news, a days long sick out impacting the living and the dead. The families of two COVID victims receive $100,000. Public schools set to reopen in two weeks and an MP robbed at gunpoint. Welcome to Our News and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Top news tonight, Governor General Sir Cornelius Smith has tested positive for COVID-19, according to a statement issued by his office. Sir Cornelius, who is fully vaccinated, was reportedly tested on Friday after coming into contact with someone who tested positive. He learned that on Sunday evening he had been infected. According to his office, the Governor General has no symptoms and will abide by public health quarantine protocol. Sir Cornelius received his first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine back in March. In other news, public schools are scheduled to reopen on August 30th, according to Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd, who urged parents to get their children over age 12 vaccinated. Here's Georgia Bain. As education officials finalize which schools will be operating in the hybrid environment or fully face-to-face, -face, the education minister says that he recommends that all parents with students between the ages of 12 and 17 register those students to take the Pfizer vaccine that is now in country. And I hope to God strongly, strongly, strongly encourage parents to permit their students, their children, to take these, um, to take these uh, vaccines. Absolutely, positively. Do please remember that no child can enter the public school system without vaccination. 131 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed on Sunday. 113 of those cases are on New Providence. Seven are on Grand Bahama and nine are on Abaco. Unless you can maintain seven to 12 feet of square foot space, then the child is going to have to be in a virtual space. And that's, that's the stipulation. For us, there are some schools that will mean 40% of the students or 60% of the students, or even some schools, 70% of the students because they have the space. But of course, um, we are going to be rolling out August the 30th. Lloyd explained that parents on islands with high COVID-19 numbers like New Providence can choose the virtual option if they have reservations about face-to-face -face learning. In the urban centers, and obviously we're talking about New Providence, Grand Bahama, Abaco, parts of Elutra and Andros, they are going to go hybrid, almost hybrid, okay? Now, um, this, in, this does not just simply go for the public schools, this is for all schools, all schools, because of course, as you know, as the Minister of Health and the Ministry of Education, we're responsible for education in the system, and the Ministry of Health and Department of Health officials have stipulated this is the way education is going to roll out 21-22 across the system. Lloyd said while a final decision hasn't been made for schools on islands such as New Providence and Grand Bahama, plans for family island schools were straightforward. Some islands, some schools, face to face. You know them already. The Michael community essentially in Long Island and a few others. They really don't have an issue with COVID and certainly they are small enough that even if they did, the requirement of social distance and so on, they can easily accommodate that. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Well, the sick out at public health care facilities continued for the fifth day, with even more employees reportedly calling in sick. The situation creating a nightmare for funeral homes and grieving families as bodies in the morgue could not be picked up or identified. Around 100 Princess Margaret Hospital employees gathered outside the facility this morning to voice their grievances over a controversial honorarium list and working conditions. Our News understands more than 300 employees called in sick today, leaving the hospital in a jam for the fifth straight day. And the list has grown with employees from the hospital's kitchen and housekeeping also calling in. Bahamas Public Service Union President Kimsey Ferguson had no comment on the sick out, but he advised of a scheduled meeting with management at PHA to discuss the honorarium list and the subsequent fallout. And this sick out is having an effect on the living and the dead. Bodies are housed in the morgue. Bodies cannot be released to us for burial. And at the same time, we are at a point where we can't even put bodies into the morgue that would have died outside of the hospital because the morgue is full to capacity. Bahamas Funeral Directors Association President Kirsch Ferguson said funeral homes have had a tough time over the last five days as they were unable to pick up or even drop off bodies at the Rand Morgue due to the suspension of services. We were adamant and insisting that a doctor come to the house to sign a death certificate because of our fear that because the morgue is full, the body would actually decompose if we were to attempt to take it to Princess Margaret because one, there's no personnel there to receive us, and number two, the morgue is full to capacity. PHA said in a statement, morgue services resumed Monday with the release of remains. Identification of remains will resume on Tuesday. 
But up to this afternoon, funeral directors called the situation a nightmare, making the grieving process even harder for families. Vaughn Jones called it vexing as one funeral had to be postponed because the body couldn't be collected. The grief process is such a burden on them. And, uh, and so from our standpoint, um, with the morgue having these delays, um, it is causing much, much problems. When we visited the Merritt's funeral home, we met a family that had been trying to get their mother's remains from the morgue since she passed away on Friday. While they did not wish to speak on camera, Demerit's managing director Llewellyn Aswood II said the sick out at PMH has been doing more damage to families than one can imagine. We as funeral directors, we are trying to be as accommodating as possible to the morgue staff as well as to the family members so that we could try to be a bridge to the gap. Right. Yes, sir, so that we could get things done in a timely manner. Denali Penmaki of Evergreen says to call it a hard situation to deal with would be an understatement. We cannot plan a funeral with the body in the morgue. Neither can the family um, proceed with their business with the body in the morgue because we, uh, we don't receive death certificates until the body's released. And usually the family need their death certificate for insurance purposes. We need it for NIB, we need it for social services, we need it for whatever, banking institution. The families of two healthcare workers who died early on in the pandemic have received $100,000 each. The payments are part of a temporary death benefit for healthcare workers who volunteered to serve on the front line of the COVID battle. Jared Higgs has more. It was a somber affair at the Ministry of Health as officials welcomed the families of two healthcare workers who died on the front line of the COVID-19 battle during the second wave of the pandemic. Minister of Health Renwood Wells described Nurse Sherilyn Charlton Bain and custodian Marion Burroughs McKinney as heroes, saying they offered themselves at a time when many were reluctant. Both women were considered to be the early heroes in the COVID-19 fight. These women willingly respond to the call issued by this administration. They were courageous in executing their duties during the COVID-19 response. When some of their colleagues were somewhat hesitant and some may have declined service. McKinney, a custodian at PMH, died on September 29, 2020, while Bain, a nurse at the Bahamas Department of Corrections, died on October 10, 2020. The $100,000 given to the families are part of a death benefit that government offered to healthcare workers for a limited time. Well said, both women fully qualified. We know that no monetary value can replace the life of your mother, wife, daughter, sister, aunt, or friend. However, it is our hope that it will provide for a time the necessary funding that would have ordinarily been supplemented by your loved one's income. The Nassau Guardian reported that Nurse Bain died while quarantining. While it was an emotional affair, both families expressed gratitude. We just want to say thank you for the support that we had the person who attended the funeral, um, Nurse Dawn, and another person from the Office Department of Corrections. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Well, as officials strive to vaccinate 60,000 people in the next six weeks, hundreds lined up outside vaccination sites across New Providence today to get the jab. Here's Berthony McDermott. Residents flooded the four COVID-19 vaccination sites on New Providence Monday as appointment slots fill up quickly. We are fully booked for the entire week at all our centers. As of Sunday, committee chair Dr. Marceline Del Regis revealed that over 7,500 appointments had already been booked for this week. 61% of the appointments are for first doses. Rassen said he isn't surprised more people are signing up in light of the alarming numbers of new COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. I honestly believe that everybody now knows somebody who is seriously ill or has died and there's more fear in the community that we need to get vaccine. That's our only protection. And I think people finally are realizing that. Elvis Roll says the decision to get the job was an easy one for him. They say it's going to stop you from dying. You know, I don't die. Uh, my father had caught COVID and to see persons around me that had caught it and, you know, it, it wasn't, to hear that story, it was horrific. So I said to protect myself and my twins, it's best that I do this. Um, my stepfather, uh, me, uh, uh, had the COVID and it did him pretty bad. It did him pretty bad. You know, thank God he's still here. But, you know, I'm um, seeing the pain that he went through, I wouldn't rest it on my worst enemies. Uh, first, I wasn't planning on getting 
vaccinated until I pick up COVID. And so I make it up my mind that this is the best thing to do. And Over at Church of God of Prophecy, the line for walk-ins was longer than those who made appointments. The people you see over here are, are walk-ins. There's about 100 walk-ins today. As you're aware, we're only doing AstraZeneca here for the rest of the week by appointment and also by walk-in. Now, according to Seminet, the crowd just behind me are those looking to get vaccinated without an appointment. Now, while these sites can accommodate walk-ins, officials are advising Bahamians to make appointments as it makes the process a bit easier. If you don't have an appointment, it's going to take a whole lot longer to get through the system. As of Thursday, Bahamians will have more vaccine options. That's when Pfizer doses will be administered to the public. 38,400 doses of Johnson & Johnson are expected to arrive this week. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd revealing a significant improvement in results for the Bahamas Junior Certificate and Bahamas General Certificate of Secondary Ex Education Examinations. He said there was a double-digit improvement in 15 of the 27 BGCSE subjects. We now have the results in my hand, and that has been confirmed that in almost 11% better performance A through C grades in the BGCSE. Imagine that. And this is a pandemic now. Better than, almost 11% better than 2019 in A through C, which is, of course, the grades that most people always look at. Lloyd was impressed with the number of students receiving A's in BJC exams, despite calls for the ministry to cancel national exams during the pandemic. In the BJC, the highest number of students to have been awarded an A in the BJC results. Now, if that isn't excellent, I don't know what is. And, and also be in mind that there were many in the public domain, even some stakeholders who were saying, oh, the ministry should cancel these exams, the minister should cancel these exams, all you all are doing is putting these children at a disadvantage. We knew better because we knew that there were students who were preparing. We knew that students had time because of school and so on, and they wanted to take these exams. Another cloudy day in the capital. Greg Thompson is in studio with current conditions. Thanks, Kyle, and welcome everybody for your first look at weather on this Monday evening. Warm conditions outside our studios, summer-like temperatures still are with us. Mid-80s, 84 outside our studios right now with partly cloudy skies. We'll call it warm and humid. Your winds are out of the east at 10 knots, giving us a little bit of a breeze, and your face like temperature in the mid to upper 80s. Satellite view, tropical moisture associated with Floyd, which is a tropical storm affecting the northwest Bahamas with some showers and isolated thunderstorms, as well as some high clouds. Those showers and thunderstorms will persist, persist across our area. We do have some tropical moisture associated with tropical depression grease, which is now across Hispaniola. That's likely to affect the southeast Bahamas tonight through tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come, the Pinewood MP robbed at gunpoint. Plus, more rewards pour in for Shawnee and Stevie. Stay tuned. The great True True Bahamian Treasure Hunt is here, where you can win great vacation prize packages to hotels throughout the Bahamas. Watch our TV on weeknights between 6 and 11 p.m. for your 10 True True Bahamian clues. Take note of your answers and clues. You never know, you might see the same clue twice. Follow our TV originals on Facebook to submit your correct answers before 11 a.m. every Saturday. Watch our news Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. to see if you are the weekly winner. If you didn't win, watch for clues next week because the contest runs all summer long. Go to our TV originals Facebook page for more information and contest details. You're watching Our News. Welcome back. A member of Parliament detailing the horrifying moment he and his wife were robbed at gunpoint outside their home Friday night. Here's Jared Hayes. A member of the House of Assembly facing armed intruders at his own home. I looked back in the rearview mirror watching and I saw someone coming into the yard crouched. Ramming says he arrived home from a meeting on Friday night and was sitting in his vehicle, waiting for his wife, who drove separately. And he cocked his gun, said what he had to say, make his threats. Um, and so I complied with his threat because I know how to de-escalate. Turns out there wasn't one, but two intruders. Ramming says he was careful not to startle them, and he didn't bother looking at their faces because he has security cameras. But he was worried when he saw his wife arrive home during the robbery. My desire was just to get you out of the yard quickly because I know the wife is coming. And I wanted to keep this as quiet as possible because my kids were inside. And I have a daughter who chronically, every time I get home, if she had a car, she's going to come out. Daddy need me to get something out of the car. I didn't want them coming out. The robber stole electronics, jewelry and other personal items from Raming and his wife. 
while they did order both of them to lay on the ground and pointed guns at them, neither were injured. That same night, the police were able to track down the stolen property and arrest the suspects. The Pinewood MP says he stayed calm during the ordeal and called his wife a hero. Because she was calm, the control of the situation was maintained because you and I are both men. And quite frankly, if it did escalate with her, then that's just, that's it. You know that would have been it. And so I was, that's why I consider a hero. Ramming says staying calm in dangerous situations is key. He says he has taught his family lots of self-defense, but the best defense is de-escalation, he says. Being willing to die to your family is secondary. And, and, but that is, not, that is not the first option. You live for your family. But if push comes to shove, you must realize that as a good shepherd, you must be willing to lay down your life for your family. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Meanwhile, a 25-year-old man was arraigned today on murder and attempted murder charges. Brandon Pinder is accused of killing Dino Brown and attempting to kill Dennis Bowles on August 9th. According to police, the men were standing outside a home when two gunmen exited a jeep and opened fire on them. Pinder's attorney, Ian Cargill, told the court that his client was at home when the shooting incident occurred. He said he submitted a jump drive containing surveillance footage to an, to an officer to prove that Pinder was at home. The Ridgeland Park resident was not required to enter a plea to the charges and bail was denied. He was remanded to prison until December 14th. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news returns, Rotarians help Abaco students get ready for school and corporate Bahamas showing its appreciation to Olympic gold medalists. Stay tuned. The great True True Bahamian Treasure Hunt is here, where you can win great vacation prize packages to hotels throughout the Bahamas. Watch our TV on weeknights between 6 and 11 p.m. for your 10 True True Bahamian clues. Take note of your answers and clues. You never know, you might see the same clue twice. Follow our TV originals on Facebook to submit your correct answers before 11 a.m. every Saturday. Watch our news Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. to see if you are the weekly winner. If you didn't win, watch for clues next week because the contest runs all summer long. Go to our TV originals Facebook page for more information and contest details. A nonprofit organization is ensuring that students on Abaco are prepared to go back to school. The Bahamas Rotary Clubs donated over $250,000 worth of educational supplies and equipment to the Ministry of Education this morning for the Abaco School District, which was adversely impacted by Hurricane Dorian in 2019. We reached out to our friends in the United States and said, We need help. One individual came and said, well, I'll give you $250,000 if you match it. We matched it, and we put that over $500,000 just for education in Abaco. At least 30 different countries sent us funds to assist us. And I might add that we've already had those countries come back and say, what can we do for those in Haiti after the earthquake? That's what Rotary does. Director of Operations for Rotary Bahamas Disaster Relief, Kendall Strawn, also had a surprise for Olympic gold medalist Stephen Gardner, who hails from Moores Island. On a recently accompanied trip to Moores Island, Abaco, while at the All Age Primary School in Moores Island, along with a donor, there was a decision made. And on behalf of our Olympic gold medal, Stephen Gardner, this 45 kW generator will be taken and installed at the Moores Island All Age School at a value of $50,000. Gardner expressed his gratitude to Rotarians. I just want to thank Rotary Club International for everything that they're doing, you know. Um, we really do appreciate it. And we know the island still needs help, you know. And I'm just thankful that you guys are looking out for Abaco and Freeport and Moores Island because I was there at one point. And I, I know for sure what I went through in school in Moise Island just to get by. 
Well, the royal treatment continues for Olympic gold medalists Shawnee Miller-Weibo and Stephen Gardner, who returned home last week following their stellar performances at the Tokyo Olympics. Today, they received checks from Equity Trust CEO Michael Dean, who says it's a limb reward for representing the Bahamas at the Olympic Games. I am a, a BACO track official, so I've seen Shawnee and Stevie when they were mere teenagers. Now they're superstars. We must continue to encourage the Bahamas to support track and field and sports in general. We have so much talent, and the only way we'll be able to utilize it is if we support them from high school straight up to world champions. A very grateful Miller Weibo and Gardner said they are looking forward to the future. We went out there and we both represented and we did. We both made history for our country and for ourselves. So it's good to be back and to see all the smiles on everybody's faces. I was just happy to be back home, like you said, just to be able to celebrate with the Bohemian people. Um, we just thank them for all the support over the years and all the prayers, of course. And yeah, it's just great to be back. Meteorologist keeping a close eye on Grace. Greg Thompson has the latest when our news returns. The great True True Bahamian Treasure Hunt is here, where you can win great vacation prize packages to hotels throughout the Bahamas. Watch our TV on weeknights between 6 and 11 p.m. for your 10 True True Bahamian clues. Take note of your answers and clues. You never know, you might see the same clue twice. Follow our TV originals on Facebook to submit your correct answers before 11 a.m. every Saturday. Watch our news Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. to see if you are the weekly winner. If you didn't win, watch for clues next week because the contest runs all summer long. Go to our TV originals Facebook page for more information and contest details. Grace is expected to pass south of the Bahamas but doesn't pose much of a threat. Greg is back with the latest. Thanks again, Kyle, and welcome back, everybody, for your second look at weather. We are tracking three systems in the tropics. We have Tropical Storm Fred moving across the Florida Panhandle as we speak. Showers and thunderstorms affecting the northwest Bahamas. We will continue to see that activity tonight through tomorrow. But as Fred lifts out towards the north, showers and thunderstorms will be moving away from our area. And eventually we should see some better conditions across the northwest Bahamas. We also have Tropical Depression 8, which is, has the potential to make it to Tropical Storm status tonight or tomorrow. Near the Bermuda area will eventually make a jog towards the southwest and eventually more towards the northwest over the next 24 to 36 hours and into the North Atlantic eventually weakening over the next several days. Also, we have Tropical Storm Grace, Tropical Depression Grace, pardon me, which is near Haiti. Showers and thunderstorms associated with that system will begin to affect the southeast Bahamas tonight through tomorrow. And as that system gets near to the area, we expect those winds to be picking up across the central and southeast Bahamas. So boating will become a challenge and we're asking you boaters to exercise extreme caution if you plan on doing any of that activity. The track of Grace will continue to move towards the west-northwest, fortunately keeping it to the south of us and eventually across central Cuba by Wednesday and into the Gulf of Mexico by Thursday. Once again, showers and thunderstorms and some strong winds affecting the southeast and central Bahamas over the next two days. Boating forecast for the northwest Bahamas tonight through tomorrow. We expect those winds to be out of the east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots. Seas will be running 4 to 7 feet, so we have a caution flag posted for you. And the central and southeast Bahamas, an advisory is posted. East to southeast winds 15 to 25 knots. They will be gusting higher. Very rough seas at 6 to 9 feet. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through Saturday. That's a look at our weather. Back to you, Kyle. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Enjoy the rest of your Monday evening, Bahamas.